Hi, I'm David from Electric Teaching, and I'd like to show you how to do TI programming with the law of cosines. I have already have a video up there for how to do a problem that gives you a side angle side and using the law of cosines. I'd like to do a problem that gives you a side 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 problem to solve and basically get the angles left in the triangle. So what we have right here is basically my version of the law of cosines. Instead of the triplicate versions that most textbooks use with A, B, and C, I like to have the students think of the opposite side squared is going to be equal to the other two sides squared, which I just label S1 and S2, minus the two times the side one, side two, cosine of the angle, and this is the most important part, this angle is opposite that uh, side on the other side of the equation. That's why I use O. O is for opposite in this case. Well, my program that I'm giving right now, or the program that I want to teach you right now, solves problems that are for a given side, side, side. So if I have a problem, a, a triangle here that's a three, maybe a four, and a six there, I think that'll work. Just always double check that the two sides are always equal to be able to be, to be able to stretch and reach out and make a triangle as I like to teach the students. So. What we have is a, a triangle, not drawn to scale here, but a 3, 4, 6. And let's say I want to find an angle maybe opposite 4. So I'm trying to figure out what that angle, which I'll label theta, is. So this requires us to use the law of cosines. This is a side, side, side. The first thing I always ask the students is, do you have an opposite angle and side given? And in this case, no. We have to use the law of cosines. So after I teach the students how to do it by hand, which is really kind of using a calculator to do the big calculation, um, I have them. T I try to teach them how to use a TI programming trick so that they can work on problem problem solving the, the word problems rather than dealing with the hand calculations for most of the time. So um, let me show you in, uh, uh, how this would look with the six, four, and three. If I wanted to find the opposite side of the four, this is key, the opposite side of the four, if I want to find that angle, that means it's four squared goes over there, the opposite side goes there. And then we would put in the three squared, we would put in the uh, plus six squared minus the two times three times six times the cosine of an angle that's opposite the four. Notice I'm not even using uh, the uh, ABC variables. I tried to, to not lock myself down to that. So I could put theta here. Actually, that's what I will put. I'll just put theta there since I've already labeled it theta. So if I had to solve for this, I have the students actually do the algebra on paper, which is to first subtract off. Okay, first subtract off two things that are adding. This is multiplying. So the next step would be basically to divide. I am going through this a little fast. I actually said two there and I put an S there for some reason. Sorry about that. Minus two times three times six there. Pardon that uh, mistake there. And then the next thing you have to do is divide by the multiplier there. This is the part that a lot of students mess up, end up doing a PEMDAS or an order of operations mistake. So I emphasize to make sure that they do the algebra carefully. And I am exam again hurrying through this because I want to show you the program part of it. And then what we have over here is we have the cosine of theta still left. So I've subtracted off two things that are adding, and then I divided the whole chunk. Don't forget, that's a whole chunk on the TI-83. So I would teach them to program the, or to punch this into the calculator and then get cosine inverse. So I'd bring up the calculator, I'd bring that up, turn it on, and I would show them, show them, let me clear the screen there so you don't get confused, that you need to punch in this whole calculation very carefully. So parentheses. 4 squared. I don't even have them think 16 or 9 or any of that. I just have them kind of, you know, punch it in as they see it. It'll, it'll prevent hasty mistakes. And why not? They have a calculator in their hand that is absolutely required to solve this. So I try to teach them to do it in, in the most, I guess, uh, accurate way, systematic ways to prevent errors. Divided by, again, that's a chunk, so you got to use parentheses. I always emphasize that part of using the TID3, it's a big mistake that happens with students. Sorry about that, I'm trying to find some room over here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to say divide by the negative 2 times 3 times 6. I know that seems a little weird, punching that all in. But if you want to be safe here, this is a nice, safe way to go. So now I have what the cosine theta is equal to. So the last step, how do you undo a cosine over here, as I ask my students? And you undo it with the cosine inverse. So if I come back over here and I go second cosine, that's the, whoops, that didn't work. 
we'll clear that. Second, cosine. That's the cosine inverse. And then I always have the students do second ANS. If you type in a rounded off number, you're going to get an answer that is not accurate. So I really emphasize using the power of the calculator, the ANS. So I'm going to find that the angle opposite the 4, opposite the 4 is about 36 degrees. So this is about 36 degrees. For the programming now, same idea, same idea. I'm going to use basically what you see right here. I'm going to use, hang on a second, what you see right here. I'm going to use this idea right there to program my calculator to do it. My thinking is, is since you're having them punch it in in one shot anyways, which I believe you should, then why not, we, why not make a program and let them spend time solving word problems without being bogged down by calculations? I hope I'm not upsetting too many teachers out there. So I'm going to go to Program. I'm going to go over there to New, New, Enter. So when you go to Program, Program is about uh, the button above cosine, in case you're having trouble finding it. Okay, and you're asked to put in a name of a program. The alpha is locked down, that's the blinking A. And so what I'm given here is a side, side, side. So I call this my side, side, side program. I believe I already have a program named that. So you can name it anything you want. I'm actually, whoops, I didn't want that. Um, I'm actually going to name it um, uh, T S S S. So my temporary side, side, side for this video. I'm going to hit enter. Now I'm going to ask, I'm going to have three programming lines here, three programming lines. The first thing I need to do is I need to get the three sides given. So we, pro, we hit the program button, and it's above the cosine. Now that I'm in a program, when you hit the program button, it brings up a different menu set. It has some control features, but what I'm interested in right now is right arrow, input, output features. Let's prompt, let's prompt three variables, three sides. I will just use R, S, and T, I guess. R, comma, comma's above seven. Everybody has trouble finding comma. It's above seven. R, alpha, S, alpha, S, comma, alpha, T. So it's basically asking for three sides here. But wait a minute. What I've found is, is that we tend to forget which side is the opposite angle that's being retrieved. So I could actually code out an explanation of which one it is. But just to make this quick and dirty, I'm going to change the T to be the letter O. I'm going to change the T to be the letter O. That way, if I use this program months or even a year later, I might remember that O is stands for opposite side, which will clue me in on what angle I'm getting. OK, I hope that makes sense. Let's put the program in now. So this is where we're going to punch in the law of cosines, solved for cosine theta, though. So I'm going to say, as you can see over here, we have opposite. This is, I'm going to write over this. This is opposite squared. And then this is my R and my S. And this is my R and my S. So that's how I'm going to program this in. So if I come back to the calculator, let's try to program that part. And let me find some room here. All right, so I'm going to say parentheses, big numerator being divided, parentheses, alpha O squared minus alpha R squared minus alpha S squared. Close parentheses for the large numerator. You're grouping the numerator to be divided by, again, open parentheses for a large denominator here. Okay, negative 2 alpha R alpha S. Fortunately, the TI-83 knows that if there's no space to multiply. So we take advantage of that right now and don't have to put in the time symbol. I think that's a nifty little thing the TI-83 does for us. So that's the calculation for cosine theta. I'm just going to store this into X. So I just hit the variable button X at the top and hit enter. Now I need to display the answer. I'm going to hit program. I'm going to go to uh, input, output, and third one down is display. So I'm going to say display the cosine inverse of that x. So display the second cosine inverse of the x variable. Close parenthesis won't actually be necessary, but it definitely looks better for programming. The TIs always save as you do this. So all you have to do is quit second mode, which is right next to second, and you quit, and then we can punch in the calculation or run the program, excuse me. So what I'm now going to do is I'm going to hit the program button. I'm going to go find the one I made. It was called TSS for me. 
we might have labeled it SSS. I'm going to select it. Notice it doesn't run it yet because right now the cursor is blinking right after it. We brought it to the screen, but we haven't told it to run it. I'm going to hit enter. I'm going to hit enter. And now I'm actually going to run the program and I'm going to check it. R is the one of the non-opposite sides. So I'm going to do three, enter. I'm going to do side, enter. So that's the other side. I'm going to do six using the, the um, triangle that we have in front of us here, uh, or behind the calculator, I should say. And then my opposite was the four. My opposite was the four. So I'm going to put the four in, hit enter, and sure enough, we get the exact same answer, that it's basically 36.3 degrees if I round it off. I hope this has helped. I am David from Electric Teaching. Thank you for listening.